So guys, girls, welcome. Welcome to In The Mix. Now, In The Mix is all about cars, racing, trainers, you name it. It's in there. All sorts of topics. Right, I'm just going to welcome Steve. Good little man I've known for many years now. Used to know him when he was trying to do his efforts in the gym. And now he puts his effort from mountain biking and the gym into the racing behind you, you see, in Tonka Toys R Us with his little steering wheel. No, he has a little Renault, Renault Clio 182. Welcome, Steve. Hello, mate. How are we doing? Good, mate. What, good. what an introduction. Yeah. yeah. You're in your I little think, boy behind. I know. It's good going. I think, I think you'll find that in the gym, mate, it was me helping you do sit-ups and no, press-ups. You know? You, you know you've got to go up and down level, not just move your, you, you know. No, I, just, I, I just used my seat to use that one. That's, yeah. that's it. Yeah. <laughs> so, How are you doing? I'm good, mate. So tell me a little bit about why you got into it. Why did you get into a little one eight oh. you know, cup? Well, the, the history is, is look, let's be honest. Since 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 birth, I've liked cars like every young boy was, and and your dream is to go racing or drive fast or own a supercar or whatnot else. So, lucky enough, um, obviously I'm 43 now. So I started racing when I was 40, got my race license. My 40th birthday, I thought I'd treat myself and bite the bullet, and get a race license, and um, it's literally took till now to get where I am. Um, pr previous to that, my cousin used to race in the Mini Challenge, which are now following the British Touring Car. So I used to span with him and learn a lot around that way. And then I got the opportunity to buy a Clio 182. I thought, hmm, oh, Clio, French, do I really want to do this? Uh, but I went to, I'd done a round at Donington, just thought I'd try it out, and it was brilliant. Uh, you got 30 cars, all exactly the same, engines are the same, gearboxes are the same, um, and they're all standard, can't do anything with them. You uprate the ECU to a controlled ECU, so we've got the same. All you run in exactly the same shocks, uh, upgraded brake lines, and um, the weight of the car can't be no less than 10, 1070 kilograms um, after each race. So you can imagine the grid is pretty close. Mm -hmm. So it's more set up and, and driver skill. And um, I'm now, well, if I, I'm entering my second season, and we start on the 18th of July in Snetterton, which has been confirmed uh, the other day, which is great. Um, but yeah, it's hopefully this year I'm I'm trying to aim. Well, I was, I was towards the the middle, towards the back of the, the grid last year with lots of issues. Oh, well, um, last, yeah, yeah, I thought that was right. Yeah. I was never last. <laughs> I was ne I was never last. Cheeky, but no, I blew up a couple of engines, which yeah. you know, my, my my fault. F fifth to second don't work. Yeah, Just let but, you know that. Yeah, well, I can do that, but you, you know, you you you're the one who's a race driver and thinks you can beat. Oh. Track. Well, to be honest, you, I just found out I had the car sent away to one of the guys and he'd done some work on it. And I found out that I had a bent rear axle last year and the ABS sensor in the steering wheel was, was broke. So I only had ABS while turning and braking instead of a straight line. So, yeah, yeah. so awesome. yeah, look, mate, I'm a race driver. Excuse for everything, bud. I yeah, blame yeah. it on the canteen, didn't serve a bacon roll so I couldn't get me nutritious in the morning, you know? Yeah. But, but That's yeah, it's. Um, it's yeah. going well, and ho hopefully you're going to come along to the, the first race. Yeah, I'm, I'm planning on coming up and uh, doing a little bit of maybe filming, watch you come yeah. up. And, um, yeah. Then we'll get on the track and race together then. Yeah, throw your toys out at Pram and, um, yeah, and then owe me some money for beating you as well on the track, though. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, well. We'll see. What are you, in, in the, yeah, what, in the hairdresser's car? Oh, hair boys toy. Right, ladies and gents, my hairdresser's car is a supercharged Lotus Elise. Lotus Elise up against a little Clio 182. Two. Two litre, weighs 1070 kilograms. Uh, yeah, me metal, metal framed roll cage French thing up against a British fiberglass aluminium chassis. Designed to go around a racetrack car. Yeah, but I, the car's probably capable in the right hands, but you're not. That's why I'm going to win. <laughs> we'll see. We will yeah. see. Stay tuned, folks, on this one. It'll be interesting. This will be filmed and brought and put back on a further YouTube, on the channel, further down the line, and then 
once that's out of the way with the hairdresser's car, he keeps on calling it, we will have the proper car come out of the garage. And then he will cry. Yeah, like, I will. Oh, baby, because I will bring out the beast. But until that point, we're going to make him cry with a hairdresser's car to start off with, folks. Yeah, okay. So you've obviously been driving. This is second season. And um, obviously, it's going to be a shortened season thanks to, oh, yeah, we're in the middle of a pandemic, everyone. Um, not that all my other interviews have been in the middle of a pandemic as well. Um, so, Steve, how, how have you coped with doing, dealing with the car situation and... Obviously, you haven't been able to do a track day as such. Oh, well, saying that, I'll tell you what, on the first um, on the first track day that was opened after the lockdown as such, I was the first car at the gate in Snetterton ready to go in. I actually stayed the night outside the gate, so I was the first one in. I was that eager to get back on the track. You know, is that commitment? He, he, ladies and gents, he is a bit of an eager beaver. I can remember when we used to go... Together and he's like eager, you know. You're late. No, we agreed a time. No, you're late. That was it. You wanted to get going, and that was that. So, Always early, never late. Yeah, we know that as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, or, or breaks early, not late. You know, just like yeah. We can see it happening, can't we, ladies and gents? Yeah. As my well, head, let's, let's move on. <laughs> my hairdresser's goes past my hairdresser's car goes past the French the French loaf. Yeah, yeah. I, I I think it's funny just watching you try and get in and out of it, but then again you're quite small anyway, so getting in it's quite easy, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah I know. It's all right. Uh, I managed to get into an F forty yesterday, ladies and gents, quite easily and that's a damn sight harder than getting into my hairdresser's car. I must admit my I, I I do tip my hat to you on that one mate. I'm I'm proper jealous on that. Not my favourite car I might add. I'd still prefer to have your beast. With practicality, you can't take it to the shops. You can't. You know, you're worried about people scratching. Uh, yeah. Oh, into the car park like I still do with mine. Yeah, but you still get a, cra- a, a crowd around it. At least yours, you can take to the shops then take it to a track. It, oh, it's no. an everyday. You still get crowds looking at my car, still. Mm. But, you know, the reaction at the petrol station yesterday was pretty funny. I'll give mm-hmm. it a bit. Oh, it, was, it was hilarious, mate. It was hilarious. But I managed to get right down to the MOT station in a Porsche Carrera, a Porsche 911 GT2 RS. Um, boy, are they quick. That, right. yeah. That's the surprising. RSs are, yeah. Well, they, well they, they're, they're so light, aren't they? Yeah, seven, 650 brake in this one. And, boy, it reminded me of my old Impreza, like that smack in the back sort of feeling. Yeah. Where, a weapon as well, wasn't it? Uh, it's just literally just like a scud missile. It just you put it, you, you turn the engine on, and it's warm, and you're going, and it's flick, 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 flick. This was manual. This um, RS GT2 RS yesterday was a manual left hand. Yeah. Oh my god, did it go! Like seventy felt like nothing. Like it was thirty miles. <laughs> Something or other was like. Wow, that's like 50, 60 miles an hour. It was a very, 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 very quick cut. Mind you, with the lockdown the way it is, mate, the roads have been quite empty for you to uh, tear us around like that, didn't you? Possibly. <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I did get a dirty look today in my hairdresser's car from a from a copper. So, yeah. Yeah, he probably came. Is he in his wife's car? <laughs> probably. Not married, though, mate. You know, not married. So I get yeah. one. So with the lockdown, we've done tinkering around. My son, lucky enough, he's um, he spent last year with me. Um, coming. It, Lord Grey was very good at letting him come out of school because he was learning. And then in January, he got accepted to the National, um, National uh, College of Motorsport in Silverstone in right. September. Um, right. And he, um, yeah, and so he's spannering up for them. So me and him have tinkered around and done little bits here, there and there. But I think it's just, trying to keep your hands in on, on it and, and counting down the 32 days now until I actually get racing. It's <laughs> counting that down. That's worse than 99% of the gym gut people I know counting hours down, let alone minutes, to get back in a gym. But, you know. But, yeah. right, so you're looking forward to that. 
you're looking forward to losing and, and losing some money as well at the same time. We get that. Yeah. So, Steve, the reason I brought you on is we have the two-car unlimited budget challenge and we also have the five-car garage of two million pounds maximum limit challenge. So, we will set off with the, the hardest one, I think, is really the unlimited two-car garage. That's quite simple for me. It is. Clio 182 race car and another Clio 182 race car for when that one breaks, I can use that one. Easy. Right, Steve, I'd like to, I'm going to really grill you on this. We're talking about any car on this planet in your car ultimate garage. You want two Renault Clio 182. Race cars, yeah. Race cars. Please explain why. You'll know when you get in it, mate. There's, there's nothing like it. And I've been in some serious cars, but there's nothing like it. And let's be honest, you, it's, I'm, yeah, I, I, all I want to do is go racing, mate. I'm not interested in anything else. And, and having a nice car would petrify the life out of me driving it around on the road today or something get it wrong. Now, the second one, I, I'm looking forward to this because you might find that interesting with a two million garage. Um, but as for a, 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 a car, uh, for a car, car garage at the moment, I'm happy trying to go around in my work van and then having two race cars so I can go and enjoy that safely on a racetrack rather than tearing us around the street. Um, but the next one I've thought about quite, quite hard to the point where um, I thought about you're on about five cars now in a garage. Now, how about this? You had five, you had a garage, you had a swimming, well, you had a swimming pool, yeah. Then round the swimming pool, you had glass showing cases with your cars in them, right? This is how I pictured this. So I've really thought into this, right? Into detail, mate. I, I would have yeah. thought I'd have written lists. Beyond... No, do, you, do you know what? Yeah. <laughs> I thought you would. I'm, I'm thought... organised. I can, I can help it. Right, okay. You're going to go for this. Yeah, I'm going to go for this one because the two cars is at this moment is two Clios. That's all I'm interested in. Right, so... Right, for everyone who doesn't know, this is the, the five cars for a maximum of two million pounds. Yeah. Let's hear them, Steve. Right, okay. Nissan GTR. Right, why? Why? Because I've always loved them. Always loved them. And it's, it's, um, it's a, a supercar that you can legitimately um, drive around and maintain and keep and not worry too much about it. Not too worried about Ferraris, Lamborghinis, or anything like that. But Nissan GTR. Bear in mind, I've worked this into um into a budget, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this is going to be the case around my swimming pool. These cars. It's going to be so retail of that is eighty four thousand. Right. Okay. Next one. Hmm? Are you ready for the next one? Oh. The Colin McRae Sierra Cosworth. Right. The rally car. The actual one or a the actual one. The actual, no, one. the actual one. Do you know what the retail value of that is? It's priceless. Okay, right. So, so it could it could be more, it could be less. It depends. It depends. But even if you went for a replica, the replica is going to cost you probably one hundred and fifty to two grand, two hundred grand for a replica. So we'll go. We'll go. We'll base it on the replica at two hundred. Right. That's two hundred eighty-four thousand you spent so far. Right. Okay. The Shelby. Cobra GT. Right. Same thing. You can knock one of them out for, you can get one of them for about 64, 70 grand. Go on. Uh, sorry? Go on. Uh, they're going up, are they? Well, mm. the ones I'd want, one of the original 50 uh -huh. that um, Shelby and um, that built, that engine for. Mm -hmm. So the you're end looking at another two and a half hundred thousand. Yeah, you're looking at probably the whole car yeah. yeah i know i know but that's the car that i'd like i think it's beautiful i think it's it, it's just a proper muscle car yeah well, that that's um, the retail value on that because i've I watched his um youtube uh, youtube channel on his car collection right yeah that's 750,000 us yeah so you're looking at half a mil 
Yeah, there we go. So, so what's my what am I up to now? I've I've done a meal, haven't I? Seven hundred and eighty odd. We're going to go seven hundred and eighty four thousand there. On three. yeah, right. Okay. Next one is my Ford Fiesta van that I had when I was eighteen years old. Yes. Really? Yes. Yes. Do you know what? I'm going to show. I'm going to try and show you a picture of this. Look, I've really thought about this. I've got a picture of this of this car. Me, because what we've got to do is. This video is going to be edited. This video interview is edited, and then yep. this video live, how this is now, is going to be yep. edited onto my YouTube channel. Okay, yep. and what we can do is we can just dial in each car on the actual thing, so people get an idea of what car it is. So yes, yep. that across, and we will put that little Fiesta van on and yep. replace right, okay. Let me talk about this Fiesta van now, right? Okay. Right, okay. This Fiesta van was uh, a 1.1. It had um, a straight through cherry bomb system. It was, <laughs> yeah, no, wait, wait. No, no, this, this is proper pimp my ride car, you, um, car, this one. It had 14 inch steel wheels on it yeah. with J Max and Coney shocks. So it was really low. Slam. The, yeah, yeah, slam to the floor. The um, wheel trims, anybody that's watching this that knows me when I was younger is going to be laughing at this. But, the wheel, but I had flat wheel trims and I polished them up that much, they would they would shine. Okay. It also had back seats. So it was it was a proper pimp my ride. But it, that to me, oh, down. That, car, that car for me is the one that I would like to show off in my little case of cars. Right. So that... To, to, to try and find one of them building back now, you're probably looking, well, to try and find one, I think it's, you know, to get one in a good condition. So what year was this? Nine, to, what, uh, was this a Mark II shape or Mark III shape? Mark II with a ball nose front. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was, it was, it was a, a, a it's my favourite car, to be fair. Um, yeah. From when I was a kid. Isn't that a bit uh, odd that when you're, uh, one of most people's first cars are yep. one of their favourites. I remember my first car. I had a little Polo 1.1 on a Y plate. Yeah. Oh. I had extra wide tyres on it. So they yeah. were, they're about this wide on a 1.1 Polo. This yeah. ripped like it was on rails. It was right. Here we go. That, yeah. that is the Fiesta. And yeah. imagine that, blacked out windows, slammed to the floor, massive wheels, spotlights. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that, that, that was, that's the car. Love it. So if I can have, to get one now, I don't know, to, to build it. 20 grand all, all, all kitted out, all looking. Yeah. I was grand. yeah, 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 okay. So, right, okay. Now, right. here's the one that I can't find a figure on, but I'm pretty well so certain it's near on a million quid. Right. Right, okay. This is the ultimate one. This is the one that will be, you've got to four cars down each side of the pool as you walk in. This one will be the one right at the end as you see it, right? Okay. You ready? Yeah. It's the Braun F1 card that Jensen Button won his um, championship on. There's only one of them. And I, I reckon, I reckon I could probably get a replica made. Maybe no end. Four. Yeah, yeah, well, a replica made for 1.1 mil. Um, yeah, I reckon your budget, yeah, you've got 1.2. So, yeah, I reckon you could possibly squeeze that into that budget. Basically, there you go, sir. Basically, off an old Mercedes shell anyway, and just respray it and put the different arrows on it. That would be it. Yeah, yeah, with the seed shirt from Jensen Button as well. So, I reckon, I reckon 1.2. There's no price for this car. You can't put a price on this car, but to get a rec replica made, um, I reckon. Yeah, there, there was a, there's a guy in um like the guys in in, in America on YouTube, come a uh, company called DDE, which is Daily Driven Exotics. They came across a guy who collected. It's got a, a Michael Schumacher um, Ferrari. It runs yeah. uh, engine in it. It runs, and that was sitting at about. 0.5 mil Canadian, I think it was, maybe a bit more. So, yeah, I can't, I can't see why you couldn't actually do that. But, yeah, you are a mega F1 fan, aren't you? 
yeah, it's a, it's that the British touring cars I quite enjoy. Um, but I'm I'm a big fan of club racing. To be fair, that I think you'll find you'll find better racing, better overtakes at club racing levels because it's it's hobbyists. Mate, mate when, when, when I used to when I used to mechanic and I did my apprenticeship and I was working for a race team, uh, we did rally cars, we did race cars. Mate, we looked after about you know your van, you want it, you had yeah. And three of those Fiestas in the, the XR2 Cup series. In, in yeah. So I know what it's like, mate. The, the lower, I personally think lower level racing is more, far more exciting and it should be televised far more than this boring oh. roundy round of F1. My, my or, first race. Oh, yeah. Sorry. My first race. Sorry, am I over jumping in because I keep losing your sound? That's all. Um, with the lag and what else? And I, this is probably the first podcast I've ever done, mate. So you know, I'm I'm, bit, I'm, doing, I'm being good, trying not to swear. Yeah. Right. Um, no, the, the the first race on the 18th of um, July is going to be streamed live via um, my race page um, through Alpha um, Live. They come down and it's gonna be it's gonna be streamed live across the internet. Oh, nice. So yeah, it's um yeah. So nice. I'll send some links to that. Probably like looking at cars going whizzing past every five seconds, and it, it comes as like oh yeah, you're last. No, 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 it won't, mate. No, it won't. No, it won't. Well, but, not this year, hopefully. Oh, but it, the, the the rule of thumb is apparently it takes three years to start comp- competing in in the top ten. The first year is to get used to it second year is to enhance your skills and then the third year you can start chasing for um because you've got two years worth of driving experience and two years worth of the car so this is my second year if i can get somewhere in the top 10 this year i'm absolutely could be ecstatic and puts me in a good space for the following year but i i gotta say it and i got i gotta give them a plug because they are brilliant and i couldn't do it if it weren't for them fuse matrix mk tobar uh, bidwell accountancy um, and Henry Ellen Trust I look after and Yowza. Um, if it weren't for them guys, I wouldn't be able to get on the grid um, or even get the car looking nice. So big high five to them. Cool, man. Uh, other than that, so I had to show them in somewhere. Sorry, mate. No, no, it's, no, just no. Like, it's just like Nike for you, really. You're doing a good branding for them. Adidas and all the above. Can't um, see it. All I can see is Nike, mate. You should be getting some, a kickback from that. Um, Easy's. 13 pairs of easies up there. There are. Yeah, mate. I like I like my I like my um stuff. But um no, it to me it's the basics of, you know, yeah, h- how did you did you obviously guys, you don't know. Steve Steve's got a window company. Company, sorry. Um but you, you also do like sh- carpet shampooing, um drive Fresh washing, well. claddings, yeah, and stuff, yeah. It's, it's basically our external maintenance company. That's all. Basically, how did you? How did did you just like um, approach your clients or what, for sponsorship? Yeah, for sponsorship and stuff. Well, like no, that. Um, I, 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 I don't, uh, I don't approach anybody for money. I don't want money off anybody. I don't want anything from anybody. It's, it's trying to. I think it's the excitement that I've got for it and the passion that I've got for the sport. People get rubbed off on that, and then. When you're offering a bit of, oh, excuse me, kids coming home. When you um, when you get a bit, of, when you get a passion for it, and when you get a bit of, um, uh, people get enthusiastic on that. And, and let's be honest, it's a great platform to put your lap, your branding on. Yeah. All them people that are racing, they're all looking at other cars, and they're all biz- other business owners. So you can actually get business from it. Um, you know. But my sponsors, I don't actually ask for cash off any of them. Uh, what I do is they they actually pay for items that we need as we go. So if I don't race, they don't pay anything. But they get the advantages of I take them out for uh, passenger rides, I take them out for track rides, you know, and the use of the car. So, yeah, I, I've got a car. If they want to use it, and let's be honest, how much is it to go around, I don't know, Mallory Park in a, a Nissan GTR or a Ferrari? About 120 quid. Is it? Yeah, but you, you do three laps. You can do a track day. You can do a track day. Sit in my car all day long, and off you go. You know, it's sort of yeah. So I'd rather do that and, and give back a little bit. To be fair. Yeah. So that's 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 all I can say. I'm going on about racing too much, and obviously, uh, yeah, it gets a bit obsessive. We've gone through your cars, mate. So 
what is the plan for Steve in his little uh, French light role, as I call it? Um, I'm 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 just gonna just just uh, keep it clean and keep it racing. That's it. Yeah. That's that's all. And keep going as long as I can go. Um, and just enjoy every day, mate. At the moment, especially with all these people dying and stuff, and everything that's going on, you just gotta you gotta just enjoy your time you've got. Cause you never know when it's gonna hit you, do you? Well, it's two years today. My old man passed away. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that one, and I lost mum just before COVID. So, um, basically, mate. Obviously, you've got how many races have been deducted this year? Luck enough, it's only one race weekend, so it's two races that we're going to be down out the whole season. That's pretty good, man. Yeah, because they've added a couple on the back end of the season. Um, I'll send you. A, I'll send you a picture of, or you can find it on my my race page on Facebook, which is SR Motorsport MK. Oh well, yeah, you're going to send me all the links so I can put. Yeah, up. yeah, yeah. I made you a little video of a walk round of the car as well, mate. That's going up as well. So, ladies and gents, on the YouTube channel, it will be Steve's little interview. Um, he did with his car, um, showed us all around his car, and you know, introduced us to the Clio Cup or the French Baguette Cup. Um, we should know. Wait, do you know how many... I should send you the outtakes of that because I've done five outtakes. And, and when you're trying to do it, I mean, even that one weren't perfect. When I tell him about the tyres, it goes it goes whether it's raining or cold, where it should have been raining or dry. <laughs> but, see, see, ladies and gents, this is what I have to put up with. French Baguette drivers, you know, five takes to talk about their French Baguette. Um... We will, we will put some edited versions together and make one beautiful version for Steve and his uh, French baguette. Just notice the, uh, just notice the noise of it. it is, I'll give you that. It's not bad for a French baguette with um, some drain pipes uh, <laughs> backside, but it's not bad. I'll give him that. Um, it could clean his engine bay um, a little bit more, but then obviously... Well, no. The amount of engine I've blown in it, mate. There's no point cleaning it because I'll only get it blown up again. Then he's not really, ladies and gents, a true racer, is he? Because basically every racer will try to scrub off all the excess weight so he can fly around that track a little bit by 0. 0.0001 faster. How many grams do you reckon you could take off of dirt, Steve? I don't know, but I'll probably, I'll probably, I don't know. To be fair, you wait till we get on the track, son. We'll have some fun then. Oh, I know. Well, I'm going to put my GoPros on, and we're going to I'm going to whiz around the, around the track, mate, and see you just like. Well, actually, I might be doing a test um, in beginning of July at, at Brands Hatch. So come down. No, no, no. Just come down and sit in the passenger seat, mate. Your life insurance and your insurance couldn't afford my life insurance policy. As long as I can have them trainers at the back there, that looks all right. You're, you're bigger than a size eight, mate, so you can't really fit in them. Jeez, you've got no light on here. Look, I'm getting all dark. No, mate, you're, you're going, mate. There you go. Oh, watch it, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, I'm going to cut it there and let you get on with your day. No worries. You can get in a few more Stellas before with your French baguette. Yeah, you and your... Wee wee. Yeah, a bit of a wee of like Nat's drink and uh, no worries, no worries. But thanks very much, buddy. Uh, no, no, thank you, mate. Appreciate it. It's always, always good to chat to you. We will have you on again at some point, you know, maybe after the first race, an update on your, on your series so far. And I can do another little walk around during the weekend and send it to you. How's that? Yeah, well, I'm going to be there, mate. Hopefully, I'll uh, get you, I'll get you a ticket. All right, got a ticket with your name on it. Yeah, well, tell the wife. There it, there it is. There it is. Wife, I might bring it, the beast out, and so she'll need um, her life insurance up to date and um, a change of a pair of knickers, mate, because she might, you know, have an accident on the way up. Who, my wife? Yes. <laughs> She's been in the race car, mate. <laughs> and don't be speeding now. Hasn't been in a beast, though, has she? Oh. Uh... And 182 brake horsepower at the flywheel doesn't only equate to 750, does it? No, it don't. Yeah, okay. No.
I know, I know, I know. As I said, it was a, my one, GTR is one of my all-time greatest cars, and I would have one, and I will have one when my mum pops the clogs. That's nice, mate. Don't... I know, she's, I, I've already told her that, mate. I said, at least I know, that, at least you know, mum, out of all your years, you've supplied your son with a supercar, and every time I'm feeling low, I just put my foot on the accelerator, and a big smile comes to my face. And what did she say to that? She called me a sod. Exactly. She said, I, I ain't getting nothing. You <laughs> won as well at the same time. <laughs> but you take care, buddy. Um, Cheers, everyone, mate. I will put all of Steve's links um, to his business, to his race cars, to his fan page, um, all in the links below when I edit this and put it up for you guys. So thanks very much. Peace out for that one. Good afternoon, my name's Steve Richardson um, and I'm from SR Motorsport MK. Um, I've been asked to give you a little walk around on the car just to give you a, a brief description of the, the car that we race in the 750 Motor Club KTEC Leo Championship. So, here she is. There's not too much difference between this and a road car because of the regulations. We have to um, use a standard gearbox, standard engine, um, just to keep the grid as level as we can. We have to use control tires um, that are barcoded due to the championship. So they're allocated because we can only use a certain amount of tires per season. Uh, they are treaded, they're not slicks. So we use the same ones whether it's wet or cold. Um, the car uh, weighs without a, w with the driver after each race, it can't weigh no less than 10, 70 kilograms, which they weigh after each race. Um, here's the engine. As I said, standard engine, it's a 2 litre, 182 brake horsepower. Um, but it's got a controlled KTEC ECU on there, so they, the mapping is the same for all the cars across the grid. Um, inside, it's uh, completely stripped out with a, a, a roll gauge. Um, all inside. We'll start her up. A little bit louder than a standard road car. So we can change. We've got to um, run the standard cat. We've got a cat in it, but we, you know, we're free to do what we want with the exhaust. Racing would be um, achievable if it weren't for the sponsors I've got around the car. So I thank dearly. We also support a local charity. Follow us on Facebook if you want for our next race, which um, we're unsure of at the moment due to uh, what's going on in the world. But we're looking uh, around about the 18th of July, fingers crossed.